Hydrogen-powered transportation is no longer limited to laboratories, pilot projects, or hypothetical future prospects. Russia is currently in the process of developing its first hydrogen-powered passenger train for Sakhalin Island, signifying an important step in the nation's adoption of alternative energy sources for rail transportation. The initiative presents a fundamental question, whether hydrogen traction can transition from a regional trial to a practical nationwide alternative to diesel and, in certain instances, even electric rail. The Sakhalin hydrogen train signifies more than just a technological invention. It is an assessment of whether hydrogen can resolve one of Russia's most enduring infrastructure challenges, how to decarbonize extensive, sparsely populated, and non-electrified rail corridors without incurring the substantial costs associated with complete electrification. The project is centered on Russia's inaugural low-floor train built on the Pegasus platform, which is being used to develop the nation's first hydrogen-powered train for Sakhalin. In the future, the identical body design is intended to accommodate an entire range of rail stock, encompassing electric trains, diesel trains, and even double-decker variants. A key feature of the hydrogen version is the use of special support vehicles that hold the power modules and energy storage systems. In this configuration, the train is anticipated to attain a range of up to 725 kilometers, which is approximately 450 miles in a two-car formation and approximately 485 kilometers, which is about 301 miles in a three-car formation when powered by hydrogen. Additionally, the onboard energy storage alone will afford an extra range of roughly 80 kilometers or about 50 miles for a two-car set and 40 kilometers or about 25 miles for a three-car set. The train's designated design speed is 120 kilometers per hour, which is approximately 75 miles per hour. Hydrogen is progressively recognized as a prospective fuel of the future, especially in sectors where electrification encounters physical or economic constraints. When used in fuel cells, hydrogen generates electricity through an electrochemical reaction with water vapor being the sole byproduct. There are no carbon dioxide emissions, no nitrogen oxides, and no particulate matter, representing a significant advantage over diesel propulsion. This environmental profile has rendered hydrogen an increasingly appealing option in response to escalating global emissions regulations and mounting pressures on transportation operators to achieve decarbonization. Unlike batteries, hydrogen enables extended operational ranges and rapid refueling, rendering it particularly advantageous for heavier transportation, long-distance journeys, and applications demanding uninterrupted operation. Alexander Loshmanov, Deputy Chief Executive Officer of Transmash Holding, responsible for passenger transport development, concisely summarizes the appeal. He states that hydrogen fuel is the most optimal solution for passenger transport that it is environmentally clean with exhaust consisting simply of water vapor, that it is renewable because hydrogen is the most abundant element on the planet, and that in terms of power, it can compete with existing energy sources. However, hydrogen seldom appears in a purified state. It must be obtained, most typically from natural gas or from water. Hydrogen generated from renewable electricity through electrolysis is designated as green hydrogen, whereas hydrogen obtained from fossil fuels is referred to as gray or blue, depending on whether carbon capture technologies are applied. Currently, a large portion of worldwide hydrogen production continues to be derived from fossil sources. This prompts genuine questions regarding its environmental credibility. Nonetheless, even gray hydrogen has the potential to decrease local air pollution relative to diesel, particularly in environmentally sensitive areas. Russia is not operating in isolation. Globally, hydrogen-powered rail initiatives have advanced from conceptual planning to actual operational deployment. Chile has recently introduced Latin America's first hydrogen-powered locomotive, developed by China's CRRC Chishuyan for demanding arid environments. Poland has initiated testing of hydrogen-powered passenger trains, 
While comparable initiatives are progressing in South Korea, the United States, India, and China. Germany's hydrogen multiple units have already traveled millions of kilometers in passenger service, demonstrating the fundamental technical viability of the concept. According to Islu Askarova, senior researcher at the Skolkovo Institute of Science and Technology, hydrogen technologies in rail transport are currently at a transitional stage. She notes that they have moved beyond pure pilot demonstrations but have not yet reached fully mature commercial operation. Large research and demonstration projects exist worldwide, but it remains too early to say that hydrogen trains are a fully established mode of transport. The main advantage of hydrogen trains resides in their adaptability. They do not require overhead electrification lines, making them suitable for routes with low passenger volumes or challenging terrain. Nevertheless, Higher costs, particularly related to hydrogen production and refueling infrastructure, mean that state support will remain essential in the near term. Sakhalin Island was selected deliberately. It is one of the few Russian regions where a hydrogen cluster is actively emerging. The region hosts Russia's first hydrogen testing facility, where technologies related to production, storage, transportation, and refueling are being evaluated under real operational conditions. Sakhalin also has a partially non-electrified railway network, making it well-suited for alternative traction technologies. Electrifying the entire island would require major capital investment and would be difficult to justify given traffic volumes, while continued diesel operation conflicts with the region's environmental objectives. The hydrogen train under development for Sakhalin is unique within the 1,520 mm railway gauge used across Russia and much of the post-Soviet region. Its successful deployment would establish a technological precedent with potential applications far beyond the island itself. The Sakhalin train employs a hybrid energy system that combines hydrogen fuel cells with lithium-ion batteries. This architecture allows the train to optimize energy consumption across a wide range of operating conditions. Hydrogen fuel cells provide steady, long-distance power during cruising. Batteries handle peak loads such as acceleration, steep gradients, and short energy-intensive segments, where relying solely on fuel cells would reduce efficiency or accelerate component wear. All energy equipment is housed in a specialized booster car containing fuel cells, battery modules, and high-pressure hydrogen storage cylinders. This modular layout simplifies maintenance and allows future upgrades without redesigning passenger compartments. Two-car and three-car configurations are being developed, offering different ranges and passenger capacities while retaining the same core propulsion system. Accessibility low floor entry, and passenger comfort have been integrated into the design from the outset. Transmash Holding plans to produce the first physical train set in the year 2026. Certification and testing are expected to continue through the year 2027. A common concern surrounding hydrogen propulsion is durability. According to Yuri Vasiliev, director of the Autonomous Energy Engineering Center, these concerns are gradually becoming outdated. Modern fuel cells operate for approximately 20,000 to 25,000 hours before requiring major overhaul. By the year 2030, their service life is expected to exceed 30,000 hours. Batteries absorb rapid power fluctuations, allowing fuel cells to operate under stable, low wear conditions. This integrated approach extends component lifespan and reduces life cycle costs, addressing one of the principal barriers to hydrogen adoption. From an environmental perspective, hydrogen-powered trains offer clear advantages over diesel alternatives. They produce no exhaust emissions, no fuel spills, and no combustion-related noise. Over time, this reduces both direct pollution and secondary costs linked to environmental damage and public health. Economically, hydrogen traction occupies a middle ground. Initial investment costs are higher than diesel, but can be lower than full electrification 
in remote or lightly used corridors. Infrastructure costs remain substantial, but they are concentrated at specific facilities rather than spread along every kilometer of track. At present, roughly 50% of Russia's rail network remains non-electrified. These lines represent a potential opportunity for hydrogen traction, particularly in regions such as eastern Siberia, Murmansk, and Arkhangelsk, where diesel locomotives still dominate. Skepticism remains justified. In late 2024, the French manufacturer Alstom announced a reduction in its hydrogen rail program due to insufficient government funding. The Netherlands also cancelled planned hydrogen train procurements for economic reasons. Nevertheless, many experts argue that abandoning hydrogen too early could lead to the loss of strategic expertise in a technology expected to mature significantly over the next decade. Konstantin Trofomenko, director of the Higher School of Economics Smart City Research Center, observes that hydrogen transport worldwide remains in a testing phase. He notes that Europe, Scandinavia, and Japan have conducted pilot projects for years, and that if Russia succeeds in scaling its program, it could become unique even by global standards. According to Isilo Askarova, hydrogen rail can advance beyond experimentation only if several conditions are met simultaneously. These include a comprehensive regulatory and safety framework, reliable domestic production of fuel cells and power electronics, access to affordable low-carbon hydrogen at scale, trained personnel, and sustained long-term investment. Hydrogen rail must ultimately be integrated into a broader industrial ecosystem, linking energy generation, transportation, and end users. In this context, Sakhalin represents Russia's first attempt to assemble all these elements within a single region. It stands as a critical test case for the future of hydrogen-powered rail transport in the country. The Sakhalin hydrogen train will not replace electrification or eliminate diesel trains in the near future. Instead, it offers a third option, particularly relevant where conventional solutions are impractical. Hydrogen rail in Russia remains experimental, but it is no longer purely theoretical. The outcome of the Sakhalin project will determine whether hydrogen becomes a niche solution or a foundational component of Russia's rail future. Progress will be slow, costly, and uncertain. Yet without experimentation, transformation is impossible. Sakhalin is where Russia has chosen to take that risk. If you think the video was informative, please like, subscribe, and share. Please also take membership of the channel to encourage us.